Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon video. In this video I want to talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. More specifically, I want to talk about the new information that was revealed for these new games in the Pokemon Presents livestream that happened on August 3, which is today at the time of recording this video. Now they did not reveal too much information, but what was revealed was at least very exciting and we finally got answers to some important questions. Like, are there gyms in these games? What's the name of the new region, etc. I am now even more excited for these new games and I cannot wait to play them. But enough preamble, let's get to the information now, shall we? So first, they revealed that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will be open world RPGs, which is a first for the series. This is very cool and something that definitely should have happened sooner. I am very much looking forward to freely exploring such a vast and buried region. Next, they finally revealed the name of the new region, which is Paldea. I wanted to point out that Aldea means village. Now of course a region is way too big to be called a village, but given that a lot of the names in these games are based on Spanish words, I do like to mention what the words mean and how they might relate to what is in-game. Next, they confirmed that Coraidon and Miraidon will indeed be rideable and, better yet, they will be able to run on land, they will be able to swim across bodies of water, they will be able to fly freely and they will be able to climb up mountains. So they are basically a combination of Weirdeer, Basculegion, Sneasler and Kisuian Braviary from Legends Arceus. Considering that Scarlet and Violet will feature an open world, it's great that we will have so many ways to move around. This will make exploring more fun, more convenient and easier. Now it looks like Coraidon and Miraidon will be our partners from the start, which is insane since they are legendary Pokemon, the version mascots at that. Normally the legendary on the cover of the game is caught late into the game, so it will be quite unusual to have one from the start. But it does make sense since they are key for navigation. Therefore, they have to be available early, otherwise getting around to the massive region won't be very enjoyable at first. I imagine that initially, Coraidon and Miraidon will only be able to run on land, and the other methods of transportation will be unlocked as you proceed through the game. They do show Coraidon and Miraidon transforming in order to travel in different ways, which is very cool and I imagine that said transformations are upgrades you can get while playing through the story. But who knows, maybe they will be fully equipped from the start, thus granting us full freedom from the very beginning. Also I doubt that you will be able to use Coraidon and Miraidon in battle, at least not at first, because it would be totally broken to have a legendary Pokemon in your party from the start, even if they are severely underleveled. I guess that in the late game you will be able to actually catch them, at which point you can then use them in battle. I really do love what they are doing with the mascot legendary Pokemon this time around because it is so refreshing and the legendary Pokemon get more time to shine and to bond with us. They also have greater impact on the story. Also, I do wonder why they gave Coraidon wheels, if it does not actually use them. I guess that the wheels are just a thematic decoration. Also, when breaking down the second trailer for Scarlet and Violet, I jokingly said that Pokemon centers were basically turned into gas stations which means you can just drive through them to get what you need. And guess what? That is exactly what happened. Next, they revealed what the basic storyline for the new games will be. We will enroll in an academy. Naranja Academy for Pokemon Scarlet and Uba Academy for Pokemon Violet. I do want to point out that Naranja means orange and Uba means grape. The logo of each academy matches the corresponding fruit. At the academy, an independent study assignment will be given to us. Said assignment is a treasure hunt. It is not clear what the treasure is, but this will be the start of our adventure. Three grand stories will unfold in our journey. One of these grand stories is the classic path to becoming the champion of the region, 
which requires defeating eight gyms. So gyms are confirmed to return, which is very exciting. Better yet, we can tackle the gyms in any order we want, which is refreshing and it adds to the increased freedom these games will provide. I do wonder how gyms will work when it comes to the level of the Pokemon you face. I assume that the gyms will scale based on the order you challenge them in. So the same gym can be both the weakest and the strongest gym if you choose to tackle them first or last, respectively. Now they do clearly showcase one gym, the Glaciado Gym, which is an ice type gym. And the gym leader is Grusha, who looks very cool, pun intended. I do want to point out that Glaciado means icing, so it is a fitting name for an ice type gym. They do not reveal what the other two grand stories are. They only say that they are full of surprises and that it's up to us to decide how to complete each grand story and in what order we complete them. Again, lots of freedom in these games, which is great. Also, I imagine that one of the grand stories is to complete the Pokedex. Next, they show several of the characters that we will meet in Paldea. Now, they do show characters we have already seen. Namely, Professor Sada, Professor Turo, and Nemona, who is one of the rivals. But they also show several new characters. They show Clavel, who is the director of the academy we will go to. It's cool that the color of his jacket matches the version and academy he is in. Also, he has six premier balls on him, so I bet we will be able to battle him and that he will be a strong opponent. Next, they show Jack, who is our homeroom teacher. He teaches biology. They also show Arben, an upperclassman who is a good cook, and Penny, a shy student in our grade. I assume that these two are rivals as well. They are probably secondary rivals, while Nemona is the main rival, since she is described as our battle-loving friend. They also show several other new characters, but nothing is revealed about them. All in all, I think that the cast of the new games is looking pretty interesting, and I cannot wait to meet them. Next up is Pokemon, both old and new. Two new Pokemon were revealed and several old Pokemon were confirmed to be in the new games. The old Pokemon that were confirmed are Growlithe and Arcanine, Deerling and Sosbok, Gyarados and by extension Magikarp, Snowrunt and by extension Glalie, Morcrow and Hunchcrow, Houndour and Houndoom, Mareep, Flaffy and by extension Ampharos, Skiddo and Gogoat, Kufant and by extension Copperaja, Girafarig, Dreadnought and by extension Shuto, Psyduck and Golduck, Sunflora, sort of, and by extension Sunkern, Biggeroth, Slacking and by extension Slackoff, Fletchling, Talonflame and by extension Fletchinder, though Fletchling was already shown in the second trailer for Scarlet and Violet. Cagnia and Cacturn, Dragonair, Dragonite and by extension Dratini, Donphan and by extension Fanfi, Mistrevus and Miss Magius, Pineco and by extension Fortress, Kopchu and Beartic, Pikachu, Raichu and by extension Pichu. Though Pikachu was already shown in the second trailer for Scarlet and Violet. Pinkurchin, Pachirisu, Swablu and Altaria, Eevee, Sylveon, and by extension all the Evolutions, Seesaw and by extension Scyther, Hatterene, and by extension Hatram and Hathena, Electros, and by extension Electric and Dynamo, Ace Q and Stun Urner, Noivat and Noivern, Hydreigon and by extension Suelos and Daino, Hariyama and Makuhita, Lilligant, Asumaril and by extension Meryl and Asuril, Persian and by extension Meowth, Drifloom and by extension Drifloom, Clawitzer, Slowking, Luminion and by extension Clouncher, Slowpoke, Slowbro and Finian, Luxray, Luxio, and by extension Shinx, Poltigeist and Sinisti, Hippodon and by extension Hippopotus, Rockroof and by extension Lycanroc in all its forms, 
Magnemite, and by extension Magneton and Magnesone, Rotom, Mudbray, and by extension Mudsdale, Serena, Pelipper, and by extension Steeny, Bounceweet, and Wingle, Hopip, and by extension Skiploom and Jumpluff, Ghastly, and Hunter. Gengar was shown in the second trailer. And finally, Gardevoir and, by extension, Ralts, Kirlia, and Gallade. Phew! So that's almost all the old Pokémon that were shown in the livestream. Quite the selection. Now they still have not confirmed if Scarlet and Violet will have a limited national dex. But assuming that they do, then it is worth pointing out which Pokémon are confirmed to return. So far, several great ones are returning and, I hope, that all the ones that never made it into Sword and Shield can appear in Scarlet and Violet. Now there is another old Pokémon that was confirmed. Wooper, and by extension Quagsire. The reason why I did not mention them earlier is that they are actually getting a new regional form, though they only showed Wooper. Paldean Wooper is described as a Pokémon that lives on the land, and it covers itself with a poisonous film. So Paldean Wooper is likely ground type and poison type. I think that Paldean Wooper looks adorable and I cannot wait to see Paldean Quagsire. It is worth mentioning though that perhaps, like several Galarian regional forms, Wooper or Quagsire will get a new evolution. After going over old Pokémon and new forms of old Pokémon, it is now time to talk about all new Pokémon. They revealed two. The first is Fido, which is an absolutely adorable little puppy that is soft to the touch. Fido looks like an electric type Pokemon, but it could also be a normal type Pokemon and it does remind me of Yamper. I am willing to bet that Fido evolves at least once. The second new Pokemon is Cetitan, which is a massive spiked Pokemon which has horns that can freeze its surroundings. It's safe to say that Cetitan is an Ice-type Pokémon, especially since the Ice-type gym leader Grusha is seen using one. I assume that this is her main Pokémon. The purple patterns on Cetitan makes me think that it might also be a Poison-type Pokémon, while its general look makes me think of a Dragon-type Pokémon. Also, while Cetitan might evolve, I think that it is more likely that it has a pre-evolution, or that it is not part of an evolutionary line. In any case, said Titan looks awesome. Next, they do show multiplayer. We will be able to explore Paldea with up to three friends, and we can even race each other with Coraidon and or Miraidon, which should be very fun. Finally, we get to what excited me the most, Terastal, which seems to be the ultimate technique slash transformation, or gimmick as many people say, for Generation 9. When you terastalize a Pokémon, said Pokémon basically turns into a sculpture made of crystal. They shine, they sparkle, they look like a gem, and they have an ornament grow on them. Said ornament is based on the Pokémon's type. For example, water types get a fountain, fire types get a candle, grass types get a flower, etc. Any Pokémon can terastalize, and the transformation provides a boost to a Pokémon's type, and the power of moves is increased. Providing a boost to typing made me think of Stab. Perhaps Stab is higher while terastalized. Which means that Pokémon get even more out of using moves of their type. A Pokémon's typing can also change when they terastalize. For example, they show that Pikachu can become a flying-type Pokémon. Though this special Pikachu, which also knows Fly, is available for pre-ordering the games. This Pikachu made me wish for a Water-type Pikachu that knows Surf. Now the typing of a Pokémon when terastalized is based on a Pokémon's Terra type, though it is unclear if every Pokémon can be every type, or if each Pokémon only has a set number of types they can become. They show that the three new starters, Persian and the Sumeril, terastalize into their own type. But Drifloom terastalizes into Fire type and Eevee is shown terastalizing into Grass type and Water type, which are evolution types. They do say that you can find the Pokémon with rare Terra types and that we can take on Terra Pokémon in raid battles. 
these raid Terra Pokemon are more likely to have rare Terra types, and they show a Gardevoir that terrestrializes into water. So I really do wonder what the limits are when it comes to Terra types. Now these Terra raid battles allow each trainer to act independently, so you don't have to wait for the others to finish their turn. This will make these raid battles flow much better than max raid battles. Also, it's cool that all the Pokemon opposing Gardevoir terrestrialize into grass in order to have the advantage over Gardevoir, whose Terra type is water. Now again, I really want to know how Terra types work, because it will be crazy if every Pokemon can become every type, or even more than just a couple of types. We also don't know the limits of Terrastal itself. How many times can we use it per battle? How long does it last, etc. I also wonder if there will be any special Terrastal forms. Just like we had a normal C moves and exclusive C moves and Dynamax and the Gigantamax. In any case, I am very, very excited for Terrastal because it will have a massive impact on battling. Because Pokemon are not limited to their usual typing. Instead, they can change their typing at will, which not only changes what type a Pokemon is weak to, but it also gives the Pokemon the ability to gain stab for different moves, so their performance improves in certain situations. For example, Pikachu is weak to ground type moves, and its strongest moves, which are electric type moves, are not very effective against grass type Pokemon. But if you terrestrialize Pikachu into flying, Pikachu is now immune to ground type moves, and its strongest moves are now flying type moves, which are super effective against grass type Pokemon. So Pikachu changes completely in battle. I can only imagine the impact Terrastal will have in competitive battles, since you might not know what type a Pokemon is until you are facing them, which makes predicting what your opponent will do difficult. Also, it will be fun to search for a specific Pokemon with a specific Terra type. And I wonder if they might give us a way to change a Pokemon's Terra type. I also cannot wait to see shiny Pokemon when they terrestrialize. This should be quite a sight to behold. Before closing this section, I do want to point out a few more things about the Terrastal. First, the raid dance for Terra Pokemon seem to be these shiny crystals. Which is cool. Second, they do show sparkly flowers or mushrooms that resemble Terrastal. Maybe this is like Max Mushrooms. Maybe we can give a Pokemon the ability to Terrastal. Third, Terrastal is available early, since a level 9 Sprigatito is seen Terrastalizing. Fourth, it's cool that the Terra Raids take place in a chamber made of crystal, and that you can see the reflection of the Raid Pokemon on the crystals, which is a very nice detail. Finally, they do say that some Pokemon change type when they terrestrialize, so maybe not every Pokemon can change type. Now, I do want to mention also that I am disappointed that they did not reveal a new evolution, which is what I was hoping for. So if Chloe CV does evolve, she very likely won't evolve into a new evolution, which is unfortunate. They did, however, use Eevee as an example of a Pokemon that can change types when terrestrializing. And since Eevee changed into the types of two of the evolutions, it's likely that Eevee can change into the type of every evolution, which matches Chloe's Eevee perfectly. So maybe Chloe's Eevee will terrestrialize? It's possible, but I am not holding my breath. But that's everything I have for you in this video. This livestream revealed some very exciting things, and I absolutely cannot wait to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet when they release later this year on November 18. Now, before I let you go, I do want to say that I did make a video on the second trailer for Scarlet and Violet. I will leave a link to that video in the description below and at the end of this video, so that you can go watch it if you haven't already. I said in that video that I do want to continue covering the games, so I wanted that video to do well. But unfortunately, it did not do well, which was discouraging, and it made me question if I should continue covering the games. However, I did get several comments on that video that praised the video, and that requested more videos like it, and that I continue covering the games. So these comments and my own desire to cover the games is what led me to make this video you are watching right now. Hopefully this video will do better. 
But even if it doesn't, I will continue to cover the games. Because they are as important to me as the anime when it comes to my love for Pokemon. So I will keep posting videos on the games until this channel becomes as synonymous with the games as it is with the anime. Do let me know what you think of all the new information in the comments down below. And I normally don't ask for this, but since I really want this video to do well, I will ask this time. Please rock smash that like button. But that's the video, as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.